Hi, everybody. I'm here for the regular report on the network board meeting, which took place last night, November the 24th. Uh, we had a very long agenda, nearly 20 items, so I'm not going to go through all of them, uh, but I'll highlight some of the ones that perhaps are of most interest to residents. So to start with, there was a paper endorsing a change to Network Homes five year strategy. We earlier in the year, as I reported previously, agreed to adopt an additional fifth strategic objective, which is strengthening residents trust in the organisation. And last night, the board agreed the uh, articulation of that fifth objective and also the um, statements around it in terms of the organisational purpose and so on. Um, it also agreed some changes to our existing four strategic objectives, including a different interpretation of how we want to meet housing need, not being just through building homes, but also through enabling others to build homes. So ensuring homes are provided rather than just building them directly. Um, we then moved on to a paper about rent policy, which included dealing with the rent increase for the forthcoming year. Um, the board agreed that the standard formula rent increase would be applied, which is the CPI, which is standing at 0.05% plus one. Um, there was significant debate about this because obviously, you know, we're very aware of the pandemic and the economic impact on people. Um, but we're also facing extraordinary cost pressures in the organisation in relation to building safety, in relation to the requirement to re re reduce carbon emissions and investment in existing homes. And so it was felt that this struck a balance between those needs and the impact of the rent increase, uh, which will be formally notified in the usual way. There was then quite a long um, and detailed paper about tackling under occupation. Everybody will understand that there's a chronic shortage in London of family sized homes. Um, lots of people who are overcrowded and lots of people waiting for three bedroom plus size homes. And of course, there's also quite a lot of people who live in homes that have more than one spare bedroom. We've always had a series of incentives for people to move out of larger homes, um, to make them available for the families who need them, but we've never really had very much success with it. Our main incentive at the moment is an incentive payment of a thousand pounds for the first bedroom released and then 500 pounds for every subsequent bedroom. Um, but we're looking to strengthen that offer to encourage people to take it up. Uh, and the board agreed the recommendations in the paper, such as they were, which was about more targeting of incentives, um, greater assistance to people in terms of the physical, you know, aspects of moving home. But they also asked us to look again at a much more targeted and tailored approach because they felt that it was unlikely that people would ever really relinquish a large home unless it was for something that really suited them in the area that they wanted to be in and of a sufficient size for them to accommodate their family when they're visiting and so on. So it was agreed that there is, you know, both an economic and a moral imperative to try and do this because of the number of family size homes that are underoccupied and the number of families who are overcrowded. We can't compel people to move, so we need to incentivize people to move. And that's what our focus will be on going forward. OK, the last report that I wanted to highlight was the sustainability strategy, which the board adopted last night. This runs from 21 to 24, and it's the first step towards putting together a proper plan to achieve the government requirement on housing associations and indeed our own objective of making all our stock carbon neutral, all our homes carbon neutral by 2050. This is clearly going to be a massive undertaking. 80% of the homes that need to be carbon neutral by 2050 are already built and many of them, most of them probably will require works to improve their thermal efficiency and reduce carbon emissions. So we adopted a wide ranging plan um, towards achieving this objective, but it is just a first step. And the board were very keen to uh, establish that it 
it would need a lot more work, that there were many other facets that needed to be considered, including the standing standard to which we're building new developments. So we agreed we would come back with a revision or with a first review of implementation in six months time and then a full review in 12 months time. Alongside the sustainability plan, um, the board considered our value for money position as an organisation and acknowledged that there are very significant financial pressures on us at the moment, which we're monitoring closely. Um, and took the standard performance reports to make sure that the organisation is delivering what we set out to deliver in terms of performance. Um, there were numerous other issues for discussion, as I said, including reports from all of our subcommittees. But in order to keep these little uh, summaries a reasonable length, I won't go into those. Um, but those were the key policy initiatives that were or policy adoptions that were considered in the meeting.